My name is Bob and you're watching Hook to Cook. Welcome back guys. Today's video, we are expecting some wind this late morning. We're gonna fish. Mario just pulled up. <laughs> Actually, Mario's already here. I pulled up after him. But we're gonna make that hike. It's about four miles in. We'll track it on the uh, little Apple Watch, see uh, exactly how we do on this walk. But again, the wind's gonna pick up. If you guys remember last video that we fished the surf. I might bring grubs next time. I didn't think it was gonna be this windy. We got blown off the water because all we brought were the five eighths ounce Kalisa suspending minnows. So those weren't getting much casting distance at all when we were making our cast because the wind was really pushing them down. So we were probably getting only about 20 feet per cast, 20, 30 feet. So today we're gonna do some Carolina rigging, which we don't do much on this channel. So if you wanna learn more about that and what we use, stay tuned. This is gonna be a good one. Boom, let's go. We are now about 0.7 miles in almost. And you can already feel the wind start blowing a little bit this way. So hopefully this plan all comes together. Let's see. Looks like it's one mile exactly from the parking lot to the sand. Always wondered. This is a good time to address it. We're definitely taking this social distancing serious. We always drive in separate cars when it comes time to fish. We walk, poles distance apart at least, which 10 foot pole minus the butt end looking about seven feet or so at least. We are mindful with everything that we do now. That's including even driving to the spots because God forbid if we get in an accident, we could be taking up a bed at the hospital that should be going to a coronavirus patient. But these are all things that, you know, you gotta think about way out. Fishing is a big chunk of our lives, big, as well as probably you guys and we make it important to get out here because you get fresh air it's a heck of a lot better than going to the supermarket but we are staying home as much as possible so it, it's a balance and there's no rule book on this there's no instruction manual <laughs> for things like this because this has never happened in our lifetime so hopefully you guys understand why we're out here and as you can see there's nobody else that's why we're out here and with the strategy that we are going to employ today, hopefully we can get limits and that'll actually keep us from having to go to the supermarket to have to go and purchase fresh fish. Right, Mario? That's the plan today. We got a plan in place. And uh, if it plays out well, we're cooking up some fish tonight. So wish us luck and we'll see you out there. Cue the drone footage. <laughs> you gotta do what we gotta do, bro. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look what Mario literally just pulled up right now. We are only two miles in, but if they're here. Smack. Oh yeah. We're close. Okay. He was maybe five feet from uh, shore. Yeah? Dang it. Snagged her. Snagged her. They might be here. We are about two miles in. Mario made a cast, one cast, and pulled up a pig. So, <laughs> there goes our idea of moving down the beach all the way. So we're two miles short so far. Again, game plan is fish the Kalisa until the wind picks up. And then once it does pick up, we'll throw on the Carolina rig and show you guys how we do it and what we use. All right, spent about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes fishing that spot where Mario caught that beast. Check out his channel for that catch. It was a good one. Like you hold it like this. Oh yeah. All right guys, we are three and a half miles in. The wind actually started picking up 
So we're gonna have to resort to the Carolina rig a little sooner than we thought. There is one way to do a modified Carolina rig, which uh, we'll take a look at right now. And the person who showed a lot of people this method is a man by the name of Glenn Sales. He's up in Monterey County. He catches a lot of striped bass and he uses these tactical angler clips just like we do. And there is a method to do a modified Carolina rig that you can again switch on and off whether you want to switch between plugs and Carolina rig and you don't want to mess with cutting off your leader or changing anything up like that. So let's take a look at that. All you're going to need for this method is a sinker and this one is a ball sinker and it's a one ounce ball sinker. Go ahead and take your lure off your clip put that ball sinker on just like that and then lastly you're gonna have pre-tied leaders with a hook so this is essentially a Carolina rig without the slide so there's my leader pre-tied boom just keep that in your pocket take your swivel just like this take your swivel and slide it on to that sinker just like that so now you have your swivel on your ball weight one ounce ball weight to about three and a half three foot of leader and now you have a Carolina rig that doesn't slide but it allows you to go back and forth and today's soft plastic of choice is gonna be these these were actually first shown to us by Bob in this clip the original bait is a pumpkin seed slider grub uh, paddle tail. Um, if I don't get bit on the crusty, they, they are definitely eating this. This is what we got them in the last video. The video before that, they didn't want this and they were all over the crusty. So it's either one or the other when it comes to my soft plastic baits. These are the two go-to baits that I throw in the surf. Cats out of the bag, guys. It's all you. Go out and catch some fish. That was the video where he showed us the crusties and he said that he alternates between this and the crusties and that was about a year ago so he showed us the crappie sliders about a year ago but before then he was throwing them for years even back when you had to get them at guadalupe hardware and no tackle stores had them so definitely an og bait that bob told us about so thanks bob he actually hooked it up with these packs so we'll give these crappie sliders a shot and one last tip bob mentions it in the video but you're gonna want a straight shank hook. That way, when you slide your crappie slider on there, it's not gonna have a kink, it's not gonna have that offset. And what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you grab it tail, like there's a bigger side of the tail, make sure that's facing down, and you want your hook to be down in there so it swims right, since this will be the heavier side. So we'll thread that on. And size, Two or four hooks work really well. Thanks, Bob. And with this method, you do want to use light line. I got six pound tests on the leader, but that allows the bait to move around very naturally. And you want to just keep your line tight. You don't really want to retrieve. You just want to make sure your line is tight so that you can feel when that bite happens. Sometimes the wave action will push it right into a hole and the fish just tend to grab it. One thing that I didn't mention that you can see here is the snap actually works to separate that sinker and your swivel. Have your swivel on the bottom separation and have your weight up here. That way it keeps them separated. If they were in the same compartment, they'll tend to tangle up a lot more, but this allows your weight to slide along the bottom, followed by that swivel. Perfect placement. Nothing even on the sliders. Oh, never mind. Yep, got them. <laughs> right when I was saying nothing even on the sliders, I get this. Well, it's better than a skunk. He's still attractive for a perch. I need your daddy. 
As with many fishing techniques, they do have their pros and cons. In this case, one big con is a lot of your fish are gonna be really small. As opposed to throwing the Kalisa or Lucky Craft, you're gonna get a lot less quantity, but your quality really goes up. So during this session, we were definitely guy. weeding through a bunch On of small ones in method. order to get the keeper sized oh, fish. Yeah, think fast. Now you guys see why we throw the lures a lot. Well, the numbers are gonna be there. Quality, definitely have a chance at catching quality, but likely we'll be sifting through these. Can I please, please, please get some quality here? But the plan's working as we wanted it to. As that breeze comes up, we wanted to be able to cast farther. And it's definitely happening, you know? So you can't complain. At least we're getting some fish, getting some fresh air. Look on the bright side. Ooh, I think I might have a decent one on. We'll see. Yeah, it's got some weight. <laughs> wow, best one of the day so far. That's cool. We'll do a whole fish fry on this guy. Okay, okay. I think I got a decent one on. Maybe. Oh yeah, some good head shakes. All right. Okay. Decent one. It's a good one. Oh yeah. Good fish. Good fish. Finally, finally a keeper. Nice keeper on the Carolina rig. <laughs> awesome. Nice fish, guys. Definitely a keeper on the Carolina rig. Good fish. Very nice fish. That was awesome. And of course, yeah, the wind is definitely coming back up, so. Let's see if we can't replicate that. Man, I thought we were on a good trend with that last big one and back to these little guys. Ooh, okay. That's a way nicer one. That's a good one right there. That's a better one, for sure. Oh yeah. Definitely feels good. That's a quality fish right here. Yeah, especially with this wind. No way we would be able to get to these guys with the Kalisas. Definitely going in the satchel. Yep, still sifting through the little ones. Sifting through the little ones to get the big ones. That's what we're up to today. Yee! Yeah, all the small ones. Yeah. It would be cool if the big ones were biting but can't make them. Oh, all right. Keepable. For today it is. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> oh, I wanted to keep him. Oh. Ooh, good one. Good one. Good one. Yeah. That's a better one right there. Okay. All right. We'll fish this spot a little bit more. We were actually heading back. We were working our way back, basically finding holes that we can cast into. And 
I got a good one to hit right now. It's a solid fish. He's a good one. He's going horizontal. Well, maybe he felt really good because he swallowed it. Yeah. Freaking swallowed that. I think we found the honey hole. Oh shoot, I broke the hook off in his. I didn't need a new hook. Shoot. Completely snapped off that hook. Lights out on the small ones. Oh, dang it. Swallowed it. That's a problem. These small baits definitely can be a problem. There's a high likelihood for smaller fish to swallow them. There are people who sometimes leave comments on our using three treble hooks or even two treble hooks on our lures, but a bigger problem sometimes is when these fish swallow the whole thing. Came off. Ah, that was a good one. Oh no, he's still there. He's a goodie. Finally, I went through like five or six small ones. That's a better one. All right, nice fish. Nice fish. You gotta go through like 10 small ones to get to something like this, it feels like. Oh, that's cool. And we're back. Back to the parking spot, which is actually outside of the entrance to this place because right now due to COVID-19 they are not letting people park inside the state parking lots that's all the beaches around here now but we're so fortunate that we can still get in we're definitely adhering to safe practices as well again we drove in separate cars stay at least six feet away but mainly more than six feet away so we're definitely being responsible about it and driving extra careful and but in terms of the fishing everything worked exactly the way we had planned because as you can see it's really windy right now and it blew us off the beach again but the major key was definitely the Carolina rig there's a lot to be said about the Carolina rig uh, it's not our favorite thing to throw but out of necessity today was the day to throw it you're definitely gonna get a lot of quantity but not necessarily quality but that doesn't mean that big fish won't bite the carolina rig or the crappie slider but yeah give it a shot see what you think towards the end of the trip i ended up going back to a regular carolina rig with a one and a half ounce sliding sinker i switched away from the glenn sales method that way i can get a, a better connection with the fish so it was ultimately really good it's not not the normal bite i'm used to but still had fun. I mean, the crappie slider works. That's pretty much the only thing that worked today for me. I mean, I got a few fish, not the big ones that, we, that we're used to, but still it's better than a skunk. So if you guys haven't tried them already, crappie slider, that's the way to go right there. And thank you so much, Mario, for letting me use your one and a half ounce <laughs> sliding sinker. It was his only one. I only brought one ounce and three quarter ounce sinkers, which were getting blown all over the place. I asked him if I could use his one and a half, not knowing that it was his only one, and he hooked it up. So Mario, super selfless. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll continue to make content for you guys while we're all in the shelter in place order we're definitely taking advantage of it before they completely shut down beaches like they have to our north and our south the 
highlight of this all, there is a silver lining, is we are now reaching out to a lot of people who we haven't talked to in a really long time and just checking in. So that's your challenge today. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch you on the next one.